Hey guys, welcome to the Heavy Gear Cast first battle report with Nucle fighting the Peace River. This is going to be a 150 point threat value game today. As you can see by like the time length of the video, it is a shorter video. This is more for like new players who just kind of want to get a feel for how the game works. And as someone during COVID who doesn't have anyone to really play with, um, I don't have a lot of resources to make a long battle report. So you'll kind of see this is more of a after activations of each combat group type of game. This is what the table looks like. It's a pretty decently covered terrain table. It's on a 5x4. And most of the terrain is just what you see, what you get. The seven pieces right here fully block line of sight and scan range because of how big they are. And the four objective markers over here are just objectives for each side for this game. Now we're going to be looking into the new cool 150 point faction. Uh, with this list, you can actually build it from the starter set that you can get from GamePod 9. We're going to be running the new cool self defense force sublist that you get from the rules. We're going to be using the high speed low drag special rule that gives agile to everything. We're going to be running three Chevaliers first, the Hammer variant, they have the objective wipe them out, and they all have the Agile trait for one extra TV each. We have two Crasiers with heavy rifles, we have a Crasier with a medium grenade launcher, and we have a Jaboa with the Agile trait that was given by the sublist. They have the objective break the line. Third combat group is going to be three Shazers one with a bazooka, one with the comms, one with a light grenade launcher, and a joboa with the um, agile trait, and they have the objective hold. The next combat group is the exact same thing, they just don't have the objective. Now we're going to be looking at the Peace River 150 point list, same thing, you can get it from the starter set. We're going to be using the EW specialist rule which is for one TV, you can increase the W skill by plus one for a model. And the Peace River Defense Force sublist, which also you can give something with ECM to ECM plus for one extra threat value. So you'll kind of see that pop up in the list. First combat group we have is four warriors. One of them is a warrior chieftain with a light, uh, medium auto cannon, the ECM plus and EW plus one. Next one we got is a Crusader 4, a Warrior 4, a Warrior, and a Skirmisher Chieftain with ECM plus and EW plus 1, which is EW2 plus, which is nice. We got a Crusader with a Warrior and a regular Skirmisher. We have a Warrior 4 unit. Chieftain has the same thing, ECM plus with the plus 1 EW, and they have the objective break the line. When we roll on off to see who starts deploying first, and by the looks of it, it's going to be Nucle deploying first. On Nucle's deployment, we have the one combat group deployed on the far right. We have a Crasier up top of that building, a Jaboa just right behind him. We have a Crasier kind of in the middle. We have four Shazers and that one Jaboa in the center building. We have three Chevaliers behind that giant uh, factory machine thing. I don't even know what's it called. And then we have a Crasier on the far left. So now we're going to be looking at the Peace River side. So we got a Skirmisher and a Crusader 4. We have three Warriors in the middle. One of them is the Chieftain. We have a Warrior behind that barn building. We have a Crusader 4 and a uh, Chief Skirmisher hiding behind that giant building. We also have a warrior and a warrior four chilling out behind that giant tank thing. We have a warrior four on top of that building for the elevation bonus. We have a warrior four behind this hut. We have another warrior four behind one of the power plants. And we have a warrior four with the medium, uh, medium frag cannon. They all didn't, uh, they all rolled pretty great on their airdrop. None of them took a damage, which is very unlikely for most of your games. This is what the kind of table looks like all together. I want to be showing you what the objectives look like. They're just those weird little round generator looking things that you see over there. One for each side. 
super easy. They're worth points at the end of the game, which will matter. Now we're going to be rolling off to see who goes t uh, first, which it looks like New Cole will be getting the first turn. So the New Cole Combat Group 1, we're going to be looking at their turn. So at the end of Combat Group 1, these guys did really awful. A lot awful than I thought. So here's why. So we have the first Shazer kind of moves up, takes a pot shot at the um, warrior over there, does complete garbage. We have the next Shazer that goes up, shoots a missile at the uh, warrior four over there, complete dog crap. And then that nice sexy crusader over there shoots a couple shots at that Shazer, and guess what? He's crippled. <laughs> How great is that? <sighs> and then that Shazer over there with the light grenade launcher shoots at the Warrior 4 over there, who also reacts. They deal one damage to each other, like whatever. Okay. And then Joboa flies up. He forwards observes that nice Crusader 4 over there. And then guess what? All the uh, all that reaction fire from those Chevaliers. And guess what it does? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So... A little depressed. So now we're getting on to a Peace River Combat Group number one. So Peace River has a really good turn. That nice, sexy Warrior 4 destroys and wrecks that Shazer right there. Next we have is that Warrior 4, which does nothing because they already used a uh, reaction fire on that Shazer over there. The Warrior Chieftain goes ahead and shoots at that Shazer, cripples it, and then the Chevalier over there with his heavy rifle on the arm does a reaction fire and does one damage. That's it. Next we have is that one Warrior 4 who shoots at the Kraser, which the Kraser reaction fires and the Chevalier, and then they both do basically nothing to that. Now we're getting on into a new coal, combat group number two, activation. This turn goes a lot better for a new coal side. We have the Kraser who shoots a nice headshot at the warrior over there because of that Jaboa's nice order to give a free reroll, which is great. Also, the other Kraser moves up, takes a shot at the uh, warrior chieftain, does nothing. And then Jerboa just basically stands stills. And then also that Kraser did nothing because it reaction fired. Yay, Peace River combat group number two. Alright, so for this one, it's basically the one uh, fire support group. We have a advancing warrior, an advancing crusader, who takes some pot shots at the Kraser, which does a bit of damage, but not crippling it. And then the skirmisher just chills out behind that building. New cool group number three. So on this turn, the Jaboa just chills, gives some orders out. The uh, three Shazers with combined fire haywires the frick out of that Crusader and cripples it. So yay, fun, fantastic. And that's it for their turn. All right, Peace River Combat Group in number three. So with this one is the Warriors who activate. They basically did nothing. We have a super advancing warrior with a frag cannon. Does nothing because of that agile looking crazier over there. And we have the other warrior who just stands stills and does nothing as well. We're going to skip combat group number four for uh, Nucle just because the Chevaliers already used all of their activations and stood still and did nothing. So now we're going on to the fourth combat group for Peace River, which can still do something. And that is the Crusader, who just kind of runs up, wrecks the crap out of that Shazer, and then the Skirmisher and the Warrior just basically chill and do nothing. All right, so end of round one. Doesn't look good for New Cool so far, but we will see what round two brings. 
So New Cole is going first with this round, so let's see what happens at the end of the first combat group. So Crazier moves up, wrecks the Crusader, yippee, and we have the Sniper take a couple of um, shots on the Warrior over there, the Chieftain, which is not great. And we go ahead and take some shots at the uh, the Warrior 4 up there on that building. Both of them get crippled, especially the Gracier, which is very sad. And that's it. So go ahead and let's look at the Peace River combat group number two. I'm sorry, number one. But basically the Warrior 4s they go ahead and go ham on the Chevaliers, which basically do nothing. The Warrior 4 on top of that building does nothing to the Crasier because it reaction fired. But that nice, sweet frag cannon does nothing to that Crasier again because it has Agile, which is stupid. All right, now we're getting into New Cool Combat Group number two. So this one is like this group of three guys that just likes to beat up on people. So they were actually able to get behind that Warrior Four, cripple him. That Jerboa goes up, uh, ECMs the Warrior up there and does nothing. So now we're getting into Peace River Combat Group number three. So this skirmisher moves up, tries to ECM the Gracier, which does nothing, which is really sad and depressing. This warrior shoots up, takes a pot shot, does nothing, and that's it. So now we're moving on to New Cool Combat Group number three. So for this group, we have the Jerboa, who tries to uh, forward observe for that Crusader over there, which succeeds. Same thing, three Chevaliers you think would do something but does hot garbage against the Crusader. All right, now we have is Peace River Combat Group number three. I think last time I said two, but this is actually the third combat group. So some pot shots at the Crasier, which does nothing. Finally, the Frag Cannon gets the Crasier after like so many rounds from a Chieftain and a Warrior. So this is the end of the second round as the fourth combat group with the Chevaliers can't do anything. So now we're moving on to round three, which the new Cole gets again. Oh, gosh. I feel so bad for Pete's River. All right. New Cole combat round number one. All right. So this one, we're going again with the Crasiers. The Drobo shoots up, tries to save himself um, so we can get that break the line. Uh, tries the ECM, hack that. Warrior does nothing. Now we're getting to Peace River Combat Group number one. So with this one, the Crusader 4, uh, even while crippled or it takes some damage, shoots the Crusader that try to move up to get break the line and kills it. Takes some reaction fire from the Chevaliers, which takes some damage. Now we're moving into new Cold Combat Group number two. So the Chevaliers move up. They all just try to take some free shots and they are actually able to cripple that warrior. I was surprised that they didn't do any more damage. It's that stupid ECM plus. All right, Peace River Combat Group number two. So with this one, the Warrior 4 is activate. So basically all of them go top speed and they're trying to just get break the line basically uh, they take some pot shots they do like one two damage I believe at the Chevaliers like no one freaking cares like whatever um, so yeah that's it for them now we're getting into new coal combat group number three so with this one we have the Shazer try to go up and destroy that warrior over there which does nothing we have all of our other models just kind of move up to grab the objective for this turn. That's it. Now we're going into Peace River, combat group number three. 
All right, so with this one, we have the two uh, warriors just kind of move up, get by that objective so they can claim it. And that's basically it. This is going to be round four wrap up or just the end of the game as we didn't need to really cover over all the combat groups. It's pretty simple with this game. So the Peace River Warrior Fours move up to try to get break the line. And the Chevaliers can't really do anything this turn. They just make some pot shots, move up towards the objective. They were able to kill the two warriors, the uh, Crusader and the one with the frag cannon, which was really good. As far as the end of the game scenario goes, so Peace River got one point for holding that objective towards the end of the game, and they got break the line for two turns, so they got three victory points. Now, the new cool got two points for wiped them out because they killed a fire support unit, and they also got hold the objective, so it has also three points, but they didn't get break the line at all. So it's actually a tie, but with ties you actually calculate how many points each side died and what was crippled. And at the end of the game, the new coal won, surprisingly. Uh, it seemed like the new coal were about to lose this game, but they ended up not because they were able to cripple enough of the enemy stuff to to get points for it. So if you like this type of video or like this type of battle report, I know it's a little not professional or it's a little choppy at some points. I do apologize for that. Uh, this is like a one-man operation, so it's not going to be the best content out there, but I wanted to get some type of video content out there for you guys. I will be doing more podcasts and more unboxing reviews. I've been a little busy with life at this point, uh, just between moving things and all that. Um, so yeah, if you like and uh, like the video, subscribe. You know, if you have any other ideas to make it easier for me, that would be helpful. This is probably the easiest I can see. And it's a lot easier for you guys because you're not just looking at a stream for two hours, which is what I didn't want to do. Um, it's just super annoying to do. Uh, and even with someone else, like, it's not that fun to watch. So thank you. Remember to build your community, guys. It's very important. Uh, you can go ahead and check out DreamPod9. I'll put a link in below. I would like to make a shout-out to Late Night War Games. It's a channel that involves mostly Infinity, which you can also check out. It's a fun game. But they also do a monthly release of Heavy Gear Blitz episodes on their podcast. They usually invite special guests, um, including Rooster, who designed the 3.0 rules in addition to some other people. Also, Prof on the Discord, which he made the fourth uh, iteration of the role-playing game. Um, and also, you know, whoever else uh, helped him with. So you can get some good quality content from them. So I definitely would check them out as well. And like I said, remember to build your communities and get some more games in.